But we come again to this very uh, precious and very uh, uh, penetrating text as we look into the life of the church and the, the life that we share with one another and how we carry out the uh, mandate of scripture in making disciples, uh, how we live out our faith, uh, how that connection uh, in the practical terms uh, is lived out among us. Um, so we were looking at, uh, last week I talked about uh, support your local pastors, and I just uh, modified that a little bit because we're going to expand that out uh, into the models of uh, service, the model of ministries. So we'll be looking at, in that term, rights and responsibilities uh, as how we carry out our life before the Lord and, and in connection with one another in the church. So let's uh, focus on our um, connection with Christ and uh, our love for him as we listen to his, his voice, uh, instructing us, uh, compelling us, convincing us, um, wooing us to live for him, for his glory. Lord, we want to hear the voice of our shepherd. We want to follow his footstep. We want to be like him. We want to serve him. We want to live for him. Change us, Lord, from within. Convince our heart, convict our soul, change our mind, transform our character so we can live for you and bring you glory. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so as we look into the care that we, uh, we uh, express to one another and also uh, particularly the care for spiritual leaders as we focus uh, on the text uh, we uh, be looking at the uh, rights and responsibility and how we carry, carry that out in terms of uh, <coughs> our uh, life in the church. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, go over the, uh, the points real quickly that we have the responsibilities. Uh, we, uh, live, we carry it out as common sense and we uh, will uh, focus on God's law and the pattern of faith and the model of, uh, of military service today. Uh, so when, uh, when Paul is talking about this matter of uh, uh, rights and responsibility, he's not talking about rights and uh, responsibilities as such, but he's talking about how do we live for others uh, as we express the love that we have received in Christ. And what this uh, love means, it means we have to uh, uh, come to the point we give up our rights for others, we uh, sacrifice our freedom uh, for others, and we carry the weak um, with, you know, the weak conscience and the odd behaviors and the immature uh, pattern of life. And we carry that for our brothers and for our sisters because we know uh, that what Christ has done for us and that will, because we know that's what the, ch the church is about and the life of the Christians uh, in connection to his body uh, it's like <clears throat> so uh, Paul talking about responsibilities uh, with the church, and he uh, started out saying that I'm, I'm uh, uh, with uh, uh, with uh, some questions, and as he asked this question, he wanted to uh, uh, compel uh, each one of us to think about how do we live uh, uh, in uh, connection with one another, in terms of uh, responsibilities and in terms of rights. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen the Lord Jesus? Uh, are you not my work in the Lord? If to others I'm not, uh, I'm not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in, uh, in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Do I have not a right to eat and drink? Do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? I do only Barnabas and I not having a right to refrain from working. Now, uh, Paul is asking these questions uh, to, to bring us uh, to understand, like I said, uh, the relationship that we have and how to be like Christ in the way we, we, we live. He's dealing with a particular issue uh, that is uh, a contention of uh, pressure uh, in the connection to the church, even with himself. Um, and that is the, the matter of uh, financial support. Uh, it's, it's a sensitive matter in, uh, in any setting, uh, in any connection to, uh, to the life of, uh, of the church, and particularly in the uh, connection with the leadership, the pastors, 
the preachers and, and, and the church when it comes to money. And so, uh, um, you know, there's a great reluctance to, uh, to talk about money in the church. Uh, we don't want to talk about money in the church uh, from the pulpit. Uh, we fear that the people may think that we try to manipulate or try to, uh, you know, leverage uh, <coughs> uh, the position for our, so our gain. So pastors and pre- preachers don't preach about money, uh, especially support uh, uh, in, uh, <coughs> uh, as, uh, as uh, often as, uh, uh, as we should. And then because of that, the, the church is lacking the instruction, and so the, the, uh, the decision made by the church sometimes is uh, not reflecting, or oftentimes does not uh, reflect uh, uh, the truth uh, uh, of, uh, of, of Scripture. So Paul started out with uh, four questions and uh, to dealing with uh, this issue. He asked, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Am I not, have I not seen the Lord? Are you not the result of my work? And... And so he's, he's, he's pointing out that he has uh, the right. He is free, uh, just like each and every one of, uh, of the, uh, the, the Christians, the believers in the Church of Corinth. They are free uh, by grace, and they are free to live uh, with the power of Christ in their lives. And so, so is he. He said, uh, I have the same freedom as you do, the same rights and privilege in the life of grace as, uh, as the Lord, uh, as, uh, as uh, the Lord has given. And uh, am I not free as any other believer uh, to uh, enjoy my life uh, and conviction and uh, to do what is right under Scripture? Uh, and the answer is, of course, uh, he, he is. But he's, he's talking like that in order to set up uh, a premise uh, that uh, later on, especially from the next time when we deal with the rest of the chapter 9, uh, he is saying that, but I'm not going to use my right. I'm, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to set it aside uh, because of you, because of the gospel, because of the name of, of Christ, because of the loss. So he's setting this up not to claim it, but he's setting this up and, and, and insists on the right so that he can give it up. And we have uh, to have that perspective uh, in, uh, in hearing this because when we're talking about uh, our rights and our responsibility, it is uh, to be in that in, in, in that way, um, uh, and so he continued to uh, to insist. Am I not an apostle? And of course he is. Uh, he said so in uh, most of his letters, and uh, he's proven by uh, by the fact of, uh, of direct call from uh, from the Lord Jesus that he has seen the the, 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 the Lord resurrected. He has been personally commissioned by the Lord. Not, not uh, in the same way as the 12, but uh, specifically and, spe- and uh, separately as he experienced uh, uh, the Lord calling. And uh, he uh, an eyewitness of the resurrection uh, at least uh, several times uh, in the, the way to Damascus, uh, Jerusalem, and also at Corinth. So, so, so he said it is of great importance, uh, first important, that matter when the Lord appeared, and he said he appeared to make to many, but he also appeared to me. Um, the list of the apostle, uh, although I'm not fit to be an apostle, but by God's grace, uh, that's what he called me to be. Uh, and then he, uh, he and then uh, he, uh, he, uh, he asked the the uh, the, the, uh, the 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 question uh, that uh, uh, do we have not a. Uh, um, uh, a, a, a relationship with you. You are the seal of my apostleship uh, in the Lord. Uh, the uh, relationship with uh, with the church is clear and uh, undeniable, and so it's, it's pointed out to a, a a relationship that he, that he said must be proven out in uh, in the truth of, of the gospel. He said, at least to you, uh, if if nobody else recognizes our relationship. Uh, understand uh, the the debt that we share uh, in uh, in our fellowship. Uh, you are you are the seal uh, uh, of my apostleship of my of my ministry. Uh, so he now uh, point out that because of that, uh, they must understand that uh, there is uh, there are responsibilities that they uh, that they face, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and so. Um, uh, he said, um, my defense uh, to those who examine is this. Do we not have a right to eat and drink? 
do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or do uh, only Barnabas and I not having the right to refrain from working? Uh, he is uh, now pointing out uh, the, the rights in terms of support from the church. Uh, so he said uh, he has the right to be supported uh, because he served, uh, uh, he served the church in this capacity. And, uh, and so uh, if, if, if everybody can eat and drink, uh, so can he. Uh, and he has uh, the right to do so. And, and the responsibility of the church is to uh, provide the support so that he can, uh, he can do so. Um, and then, he, and then uh, not, not only that, he wants uh, the church to understand that, uh, that their responsibility is not just on the surface, just kind of uh, token support. Uh, he said uh, that, uh, that uh, he has the right to have the family support. Now, he's, he's a single man. He, uh, uh, as far as we know, he's uh, he, uh, he not married, or, whether, or maybe he's, uh, his wife died early. But, uh, but he's a single man, and, uh, but he said, uh, don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us? Um, so uh, uh, if, in serving the ministry, he said, uh, uh, I want to be able to, the, to have my wife serve with me, and that she doesn't have to work, that the provision from the church is uh, sufficient uh, for the support of the family. And, uh, and we talk about that, we said, you know, the, the uh, the understanding of this need is uh, very, uh, very important in ministry. And then he said, uh, but also uh, the, the right for the family to be supported, but also the sufficient support that, uh, that they don't have to work. So he said, uh, the right from refrain from working. He pointed that out in verse, in verse 6, uh, do uh, uh, only Barnabas and I not have a right to refrain from working. Uh, so we point out that uh, that uh, it is a right uh, to serve in the church, that uh, that the support from the church is sufficient, uh, so that they don't have to work more or to take a second job uh, uh, to to uh, to uh, to make ends meet. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, we also point out that uh, uh, in the, in First Timothy chapter five, he, he point out that the the whole relationship in terms of support in terms of, uh, of, 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 of financial relationship with, with the leaders in the church, it has to be honorable. It has to, uh, to show the heart of the church and the love of the church uh, for, for the workers and for the leaders. It's, it's not something that, you know, you give money with an attitude. So he said, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching for scripture said, do not muzzle the ox while it is tre treading out the, the, the grain, and the workers deserves his wages. Uh, so it is a matter of honor. The, 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 the word he used is double honor, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be honored exceedingly, uh, no limit. Uh, you, uh, you will not go wrong if you, uh, uh, if you honor properly uh, the, the, the leaders of the church uh, in terms of, uh, of support. Uh, it, it, it sounds very self-serving, uh, and and that's why you know this matter is uh, is rather sensitive. Um, but uh, but uh, we we need to hear that, and we need to act upon that because we need to care for the welfare of our leaders, our pastors, uh, our workers. Uh, we provide not only uh, uh, in token, uh, but more than that, sufficient for their families and uh, adequately so they don't have to worry about their basic needs and we exercise the responsibility in manner uh, that honor the leaders uh, not belittle to them um, and paul said uh, it's a matter of course i mean if you think about that uh, that uh, is just uh, self-evident uh, he asked uh, the next question in uh, verse 7 uh, who at any time served as soldiers at his own expense who plants a vineyard and does not eat the fruit of it, uh, who tends a flock and does not use the meal of the flock. Uh, I'm not speaking this in according to human judgment, am I? So, so he said, when you really think about that, uh, or, or don't have to go very deep, you understand that it's common sense. Uh, everybody get, get their living out of their labor. Uh, that's just, uh, that's just the, uh, the, the way God set things up. 
uh, in society. Uh, soldiers uh, don't serve on their own expense. They don't uh, serve as a soldier during the day, fighting the, with their life, and then uh, serve, uh, uh, find a job uh, as a civilian at night to go, uh, in order to eat, to buy clothes, and to have a place to stay. Uh, so they said no, nobody uh, does that. Um, so if, if the soldiers do not get paid, uh, they don't fight. Uh, they, they go home. Uh, and then he, uh, he talked about farmers and the same thing, who plants a vineyard and does not eat the fruit of it. Uh, nobody labor uh, for, 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 for free, um, you know, to give our benefits to others and then uh, uh, they themselves uh, starve. Uh, so he said uh, farmers uh, do the thing that normal everybody would do, they benefit from the uh, labor. And then he pressed the point again uh, on the shepherd. Uh, we mentioned that the shepherds are the bottom of uh, the people in the society, the, uh, the poorest and the most uh, invisible. Uh, even them have rights. Uh, uh, the, if, if they tend a flock, uh, then they have the right to benefit from the flock, uh, from the flock at least uh, drink the milk uh, from, uh, from the sheep and from the goats. Uh, so it is the obvious uh, principle um, and then uh, we talk about how obvious it is. It, it turned out it's not that obvious. It turned out that, uh, that, the, that the, the, the church, uh, by and large, has been neglectful, uh, if not turned the blind eyes in this matter in so many ways. And, and so we need to be dealing with that. As I mentioned, that, uh, that for us, particularly in Anaheim, is not the case. The church has been very sensitive, very, very honorable in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the way they treat uh, the leadership and the matter of uh, compensation. Uh, uh, even though I don't draw salary here, uh, I understand the heart of the church. And so I'm not complaining, I'm not registering any uh, issue. And I think we learned so that uh, God will open up doors for us to do even better. Um, uh, and, and, and what we learn today uh, will open up not just a matter of, of the support, but the model of how we serve in, in terms of connection uh, to the resources of the church, the opportunities in the church, and the responsibilities that uh, each and every one is called to do. So now we uh, go to uh, point number three, and uh, this is uh, an, an opening uh, for the connection that we will have. And uh, Paul is uh, still explaining why we must care for our spiritual leaders uh, and fulfill our responsibilities. He said it is God's law. Uh, so in verse eight, he said, I, I am not speaking this in according to human judgment, am I? Uh, so, so the question that he asked before, uh, do we not have a right to eat and drink? Do we not have a right to take along a believing wife? Uh, and uh, do uh, uh, only Barnabas and I not have a right to uh, refrain from working? So he's talking about those rights and he said, uh, it sounds like I'm, I'm just uh, talking like the people are down the street insisting on their rights. He said, no, I'm not insisting on my rights and uh, we will see that he he stated the, the right so carefully and so clearly so that uh, he can uh, forego this right. But he, he wants to insist that, that this is not optional. He wants uh, the church to know and, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the believers uh, in the community, in the, uh, in the body of Christ, and know that uh, this is the responsibility that they have to carry out. Uh, so he said, uh, does not the law say the same thing? Does not the law also say these things? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing. God is not concerned about oxen, is he? Or is he speaking altogether for our sake? Yes, for our sake it was written, because the plowman ought to plow in hope, and the thresher to thresh in hope of sharing the crops. So Paul, Paul bring in the uh, Old Testament law in Deuteronomy uh, 25 verse 4, which he quotes here, you shall not uh, muzzle the ox while he, was, uh, while he is threshing. Uh, and uh, this is a rather famous quote because it's, uh, it's quoted in the New Testament several times. Uh, the general principle uh, applies to all time. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not just uh, the, 
uh, something that obvious that we do, may choose to do, uh, maybe you know, uh, good to do. Uh, Paul is saying, yeah, it is obvious. It's, uh, it's something that uh, very clear that we ought to do. But in case you think it is optional, I want to spell out for you, it is the law. Uh, so it is written in the law of Moses. And, uh, and, 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 and it is not the intention of God just to kind of talk about oxen. Uh, it is not about oxen that God is concerned. Uh, surely he said this for us, doesn't he? And uh, he will prove that uh, to be the point. And if it is written for us, then uh, uh, th- there must be action, there must be uh, uh, um, uh, obligation, there, there must be obedience. So let's, uh, let's look into the details here. So the principle of workers being paid for their work is uh, not merely from human point of view, but it is the law that says the same thing. Uh, God's law is quite clear and, and uh, quite simple uh, in this regard. Uh, actually, uh, when talking about the ox, uh, um, he said, do not muzzle an ox while it was uh, treading out of grain. Now the first application obviously is uh, to the ox. He wants the ox to be able to eat while it works at the threshing. But he argues that, uh, you know, uh, Paul argues that now in just on the human level of interaction, uh, even this is fundamental basic principle and it's so obvious and common in practice. And nobody should uh, have any question about this idea uh, of uh, the, the principle that, uh, that, uh, uh, that the workers deserve their wages, that uh, there would be a remuneration for effort, for labor, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, to, uh, to gain a living. Uh, but, but like I said, t- just in case somebody don't get it, uh, he said, it's the law. What, what comes to your mind when you say, it's the law? You know, when you're driving down the, the, down the freeway and there's a one inside flashing the word, buckle up, it's the law. Uh, you, and you better check to see if your seatbelt is on. Uh, and uh, especially if you uh, pay attention uh, you see the you know more flashing light and the one in is the law. They may say uh, something like click it or ticket, uh, and then if you don't pay attention, uh, soon you will be stopped by a, a, a highway patrol officer who will hand you a ticket, and uh, he will say buckle up, it's the law. And if you look at the cost of the ticket, you wish you uh, listen. That's what it means. It's the law, meaning I'm not kidding. Uh, I mean it, and I mean, I mean uh, for you to get it done. So that's what Paul is saying here. It is the law. It's not something that the people of God uh, uh, in, the New, uh, in the Old Testament or in the New Testament in the church uh, can ignore, neglect, or treat it lightly, um, uh, for it is written in the law of Moses. Uh, what, 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 what the law said is, is very obvious. Do not muzzle an ox while it is tre- treading out the grain. Now, uh, what uh, the, the situation is, uh, you know, in the, in the Near East, uh, farmers, when they harvest it, uh, all the grain, the wheat, and they bring it to the threshing floor, they lay uh, out the wheat uh, flat on the floor, and then they would have oxen uh, trample upon it, and they will uh, uh, frequently carry a sled uh, uh, with a lot of uh, boulders or uh, stones uh, weighted it down so that uh, the, the, uh, the, the stone or the slat would crush the wheat and separate out uh, the chaff, and um, they would just then blow it away uh, uh, with the wind, and uh, then they would have the wheat remain, the, the chaff blown away. So that's the process uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the wheat to eat. So the, uh, the, the law is saying that make sure you don't muzzle the ox uh, you have to give the ox a chance to just, you know, bow its head down and eat a little uh, wheat along the way as it worked. Uh, so it would be cruel uh, to have everything, you know, the ox uh, desire and needs right there, but uh, be restrained by a muzzle. Uh, uh, that's the image that the law of Moses gives. Um, uh, you, you are going to have one very frustrated uh, ox if you muzzle him and make him uh, uh, tread that grain, uh, we will say that it's inhumane uh, or even unjust. Uh, the ox is going to track the rock uh, around all day. He ought to be able to take a few bites now and then, and that's the point. Um, 
but even uh, at human level, as we say, is uh, common sense. Now, when we read this, we, we can say, you know, uh, oh, wow, God is so kind and uh, he's uh, so good to the animals, which, which is true. The Bible will tell us that God cares for the animals and uh, he, he, uh, he uh, especially like in the Psalms 104, the psalmist talk about all the beauties of nature, the, 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 uh, the spheres of nature that uh, manifest God's glory talking about the fish of the sea and uh, the birds of the, uh, of the, of the sky, uh, uh, the animals on the mountain. And, and he said this, they all wait to, to you to give them food in due season. And you give to them, they gather it up. You open your hand, they are satisfied with good. You hide your face and they are dismayed. You take away their spirit, they expire and return to their dust. So, so the animals depend uh, on, on God for provision. Uh, for God's kindness and grace, uh, for, for, for their well-being. Uh, Jesus makes the same point, uh, that, uh, that uh, God took care of the animals. In Matthew 6:26, he said, Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. But the point is, it's not about the birds, it's not about animals, because he continued, he said, Are you not worth much more than they? Uh, so Jesus uh, uh, said to the disciples and to the people, I'm not talking about the birds, uh, even though it's true, God take care of the birds, I'm talking about you. Um, uh, the fact that the birds, which is temporal, only physical uh, existing, and not worth much more uh, uh, even in the here and now, yet my father takes care of them to the point that none of them have to worry about sowing or weeping or gathering into barns. Are you not worth much more than they? And that's the same line of argument that uh, Paul is using here when he talks about uh, the ox uh, treading grains. It's the law. Uh, it is written by the law of Moses. But the point of the law, he, he, he now um, uh, um, want the people to, uh, to uh, want the church to understand. So he asks, is it about oxen that God is concerned? Is, is the point of God's uh, teaching uh, about uh, let the let the ox eat the grain when he thresh when he is threshing the floor, uh, is that just for the ox? And and and, and surely the answer is no. Uh, the care and concern of God is uh, not that limited. Uh, the primary purpose of the law is to govern the concerns of the workers. It's not the ox. It's the humans. Uh, so Paul is saying here that that the, that the, it is written in the law that workers get paid for their work, uh, including, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the point I want to make, it, including preachers of the gospel, um, uh, they should be paid, uh, they should be supported for their labor um, because they be included as part of God's law here. Uh, God uh, wrote down his law for our benefit. Uh, the oxen doesn't know, uh, don't know anything about the word of God. Uh, but God is going to provide them anyhow. Uh, the idea is here is uh, that we have a principle behind this teaching, and that is uh, uh, the workers get paid for their work. Uh, so, so he insists that it is uh, for our sake. God is not concerned about oxen, is he? Um, or is he speaking altogether for our sake? Yes, for our sake, it, is, uh, it was written. Now, he made this point very, uh, very strong and very clear. He, um, he, he kind of uh, worry uh, that that the the, the the judge can just hear it and then don't get the point. So he said it is for our sake, and he said that twice. And then he said altogether uh, is the word surely. Uh, for certain, for sure, God is uh, uh, giving us this instruction uh, for our own uh, behavior, for our own uh, principle, um, uh, and and not just about not just about the ox. Um, and then he gave another reason, uh, extended reason. He said, because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in hope of, the, of sharing in the harvest. Uh, so here is again point out about the, the, uh, um, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the obvious outcome of, uh, uh, of, uh, of this principle in life. There has to be sufficient provision uh, there has to be a, a just reward and just return. 
so Paul uh, talk about this principle again in verse 10 to uh, to uh, emphasize that. And you, uh, you kind of, uh, we, we are kind of surprised of how how uh, serious he's point, uh, he's making this point. He said it was written for us, and uh, there is hope uh, in uh, uh, in principle in operation here, because when the plowman plows the threshers threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing the harvest. Um, now, first he's talking about labor. Uh, so he's not talking about somebody just take it easy. Um, uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, the point next time we will uh, sh- he will show that there's a lot of hard working, uh, there's a, a lot of labor day and night and uh, and toil and labor and he used a lot of uh, word to show that when we serve the Lord and we work the work of the kingdom. When we do the work of the church, it's not just take it easy or just do enough or just uh, do as uh, much as you uh, you want to and not uh, when you uh, uh, get tired of it. No, he said uh, you carry on. You, you toy and you sweat and you shed blood and uh, you, you work day and night and all that. So so here he said uh, uh, the plowman plows and the thresher threshers. So you take the two pictures, uh, uh, two ends of the farming cycles. Uh, so start out, you you have to plow the you have to plow the ground uh, to prepare the soil uh, for for sowing. Uh, so after the plowing, you uh, you come to prepare the soil, uh, uh, clean up seed, uh, clean up wheat, and then you sow the seeds, and then you water, and then you clean the wheat again, and you add fertilizer, and then you get rid of bugs, and then you you just doing that day in and day out. Uh, waiting for the uh, for the harvest to come, and uh, and and so when the harvest to come, you uh, you you cut the wheat in bundles, bring them to the threshing floor, and this is the the picture of the harvest. When the thresher come, they uh, uh, they will uh, beat the bundles of wheat to a basket to collect the grain, and then the grain then spread out on the floors, and the oxen uh, uh, will pull their sledges to grind the grain into uh, wheat or rice. So Paul picked, uh, picked the, uh, the two uh, end pictures to, to show that this is uh, a long labor process. And when people do that, they don't just do it for fun. They, they don't just uh, kind of, okay, I'm, 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 I'm into pain. I'm, I just want to, you know, uh, to, to get some sweat. No, they, they, they work for hope. They work for hope of sufficient return. Uh, and that is sufficient provision uh, sufficient to meet their need, uh, so that uh, they, when when they do the work, they they uh, don't have to go to do something else extra. Otherwise, uh, that won't be hope. So there is an anticipation uh, here, a hope, a plowman who plows, and a thresher who threshes, that the harvest will be bountiful, sufficient to carry uh, to cover their needs, and make their labor worthwhile. Uh, so uh, nobody hopes that they will labor to the max in their job and then would have to get in the second job in order to meet their needs. Uh, so Paul is uh, bringing that uh, to apply in, uh, to uh, spiritual service. He is simple saying, uh, he's, uh, he's simply saying this, that uh, I or people like myself uh, who serve in the ministry ought to be able and so should uh, uh, each pastor, each minister, each preacher, to labor uh, with anticipation that out of that labor is going to come provision for us financial needs, that out of the labor is going to come sufficient uh, return to meet our daily needs, and we shouldn't have to uh, uh, worry about additional sources uh, for provision. Uh, so uh, uh, he uh, he point out that uh, that that, that is uh, the principle that uh, the church needs to operate upon. And uh, and uh, there should be surprise for that responsibility. So uh, now he linked it to uh, the question as well, but that's working. You know, people do real work outside. We don't know what pastors do. They seem to sit around all day and they pray here uh, and there, and they go visit he- people here and there. But it seems like they're not working. Uh, or if they work, they probably work a day or so, or maybe they work Sunday. Uh, so, so Paul is now pointing out the spiritual work uh, 
uh, with the, the material return. So in, in verse 11, he, uh, he asked, if we sow spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? Uh, so he, he already established uh, uh, the, the, the law, speaking about the, uh, the compensation, about the responsibility of the church. You shall not muzzle the ox while he was threshing. God is not uh, talking about the, the animals. He's talking about the church, talking about responsibility we have with, uh, with one another, especially with those who serve in the church. Uh, so uh, he established that, and then uh, he said, but it, co it covers spiritual work, not just uh, you know, regular work that you see each and every day. If we sow spiritual things in, in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? Uh, and now the idea of payment for spiritual work uh, uh, to some uh, in Corinth then, and I'm sure in our churches now, sounds degrading, uh, unworthy of the nature of the work. When, when we said, you know, somebody doing spiritual work and then you, you tie it to payment, a salary, it, it sounds like, you know, you, 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 you make it so normal, so common, uh, it's no longer something that uh, is uh, spiritual, uh, so to speak. And now, uh, this, uh, this, in a sense, it is so. Uh, in a sense, there's a problem when uh, uh, spiritual work is so connected to, uh, to uh, material gains that it creates uh, a linkage that you have to be careful about. Uh, especially uh, when you have cases where those who serve in leadership uh, do so to mainly gain material payment for living. Uh, and so we have to pay attention to that, and especially those who are in leadership must constantly be on guard against doing spiritual work for the purpose of worldly gain. Uh, Peter uh, does not mean word when he called that sordid gain. Uh, dirty money if, uh, is, is how he put that. So in, in chapter 5 uh, of First Peter, he said, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elders and witness of the suffering of Christ, as a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercise, uh, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, not yet lording over those allotted to your chart, but proving to be example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crowd of glories. So he said, there's uh, something that you have to make sure uh, does not uh, happen in, in your life or your ministry, and that is sordid gain. You don't uh, do the work for sordid gain, uh, for, for reason of money, for reason of material gain. Um, it's actually, um, it's a real problem, and it's a major problem enough in leadership of the church that is uh, become a point of disqualification uh, if that's the case. So uh, if you do the work of the church, and uh, I kind of rephrase it from spiritual service because when, when you connect it to money, it may not be any spiritual service to it, uh, if that is uh, the main intention. Uh, so if you do the work of the church mainly uh, poor, purely to gain employment, uh, to get a salary or because you can get any other type of job, uh, then uh, it's sufficient ground to disqualify you uh, from the work of spiritual service. Um, uh, and that is uh, clear when you look into the qualifications of uh, pastors or leaders in the church. Uh, 1 Timothy 3, uh, an overseer then must be above reproach, husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or pernicious, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. So, uh, so you have to uh, not work for money, uh, even though the church is uh, responsible for the support. Uh, that's not the reason why you serve. Uh, verse 8, uh, not, not just talking about uh, the, the teacher, preacher, but anybody who serves. Uh, in the church, deacons likewise must be men of dignity, not double tongue, nor addicted to much wine, or fond of sordid gains. Uh, so, so the so the the, uh, the gain uh, may may not be much, but if, if if that is your connection to service, then uh, then Paul is saying that you are disqualified. Uh, 
uh, in Titus, uh, uh, it's the same thing here, uh, not fond of sorry gain uh, in verse 7, in verse uh, 10 to 11, it says that, uh, that uh, this is, uh, this is the, 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 uh, the mark of the uh, uh, false teacher. Uh, when you're talking about false teacher, you always see that they, they serve um, in uh, their work uh, for money. Uh, you, uh, you watch them on TV, uh, eventually they talk about money, uh, talk about donation, talk about things that, uh, that they want you to send in. So, uh, so uh, Titus said that, for there are many rebellious men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those among the circumcision, who must be silent because they are upset in the whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. Uh, so uh, there, there'll be teaching, there'll be uh, TV show, there'll be uh, rallies, and there'll be a lot of uh, uh, commotion uh, for the sake of money. So here Paul said that a person, if a person enters into spiritual work for the purpose of material gain, he is disqualified that very work. So, so we have to cover that so that, uh, that everybody is clear. But having said that, having recognized that uh, the danger abused by the leaders, we must so understand that, uh, that the view of service, spiritual service and practical material remuneration can be distorted to the point of divorce. Uh, I use the word meaning uh, no connection between the two, uh, which will uh, result in the neglect of the church. So it, it means that a member of the church or the member of the church leadership team uh, can uh, see the very legitimate, God-ordained, spirit-led, uh, self-sacrificing spiritual service being done and render in front of their eyes in the, in the midst of the church uh, for the benefit of the church and for the work of the kingdom, which they themselves are beneficiary. But in their mind, that uh, they don't connect that to the idea uh, or to the next thought that should be also in the forefront of their minds. What is my spiritual and material responsibility to these leaders, uh, to these leaders so that they can continue their spiritual function that God has assigned to them? So uh, on the one side, they can recognize, the church can recognize spiritual service, recognize that it is true, that it is uh, from God, and it is effective, uh, and then that's it. They, they are divorced from the, uh, the, the consequence or, or the, uh, the obvious conclusion of, uh, of the issue that must also be thought about, that is, uh, how do we maintain this ministry? How do we support these men so that they can continue to do what God want them to do. Uh, so, so that uh, is, is the issue at the, at the heart of uh, the problem, is that uh, the connection between spiritual work and material support is not uh, is a solid link. Uh, so Paul said uh, that has to be uh, a link in the way that you operate, in the way that you think. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap material harvest? From you, uh, so we have to uh, to balance between uh, the uh, possibility of abuse by leaders, which uh, should be disqualification, but we also be aware of the church neglect or disobedience uh, in this term. Uh, so, so Paul said, uh, if and and the word here, if and and assume that it is true. So, if we have sown spiritual seed among you. Uh, so, uh, so he said, if we do so, then the, the law that we just talked about, uh, do not muzzle the ox while it is treading out the grain, covers the spiritual work as well. Uh, the only difference in the application is that the material payment is uh, now uh, given, to, uh, given for spiritual work. And the scripture tells us that when you, when you do uh, that connection and when you take action on that, it's not that you are doing an, any favor uh, to uh, the leaders or to those who serve in the church. You actually uh, in debt to them and uh, you only uh, recognize that uh, that's the position and, uh, and the compensation for them is your expression of appreciation. So in Romans 15, uh, uh, Paul talks again about this, and uh, he gives an example uh, for the churches in Macedonia uh, make contribution uh, to, uh, the, uh, to the saints in uh, Jerusalem. 
and he, and he put it this way, there is a link uh, of uh, obligation uh, that must govern uh, the, the, op, uh, the, uh, the behavior and the attitude of those in the church. For Macedonia and Achaia uh, have, uh, have been pleased to make contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. Yes, they were pleased to do so, and they are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in their spiritual things, they are indebted to minister to them also in material things. So, so now uh, the Paul is saying that uh, if you benefit spiritually uh, from the church and from, uh, from uh, 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 the leaders and, uh, and preachers got put in the church, then you are obligated, uh, you have a, a, a spiritual duty, uh, the, uh, the, the debt that you, uh, are, you ought to uh, um, uh, take care of the, uh, when you share in the spiritual things then uh, you minister in material things uh, Galatians 6 6 uh, make it very clear anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all the good things with his instructor um, not just share some good things it says share everything so, so it means that uh, when you enter into this relationship, uh, you benefit from, from the church, then you contribute to the church uh, so that uh, the people who, uh, who, uh, build, uh, who got, yeah, give to the church uh, to minister in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, teaching the word uh, can be uh, also taken care of. <coughs> So, 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 so Paul said that, uh, that uh, you're not doing any favor to those who teach you spiritual things by paying them uh, with material things. Uh, you are indebted to them so that you just uh, repay your debt. And you have to understand uh, that truth uh, in order uh, to, uh, to, to see the, the value of spiritual things. Uh, when, uh, when we understand that spiritual things are so valuable, so surpassing in value uh, that when you receive uh, from, from the church and for the leaders from the church, you are hugely indebted to them. And your financial and material support are just a way for you to acknowledge your debt to them. Now, uh, honestly, uh, do we think like that? Do we feel that we uh, are in debt when somebody teaches us the word and leads us in Bible study and, uh, and lead us in prayer? No, no, we, we, we think they owe us just because we show up, uh, just because we participate, that may be reward enough for them. Uh, I think that's the kind of thinking that ought to change. Um, because it is, uh, it is right there uh, in the church of Corinth, because of the way Paul put it, he said, if we have shown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? Uh, he used the word mega here for something big, something huge. And, and, he, and, and he said, uh, he said that, uh, that uh, it is a big deal to you, uh, something so surprising uh, that, uh, that uh, when you go buy something mega, you, you have to stop and watch it. Uh, so uh, so the, the way that Paul put it, uh, it goes something like this. If, you have, if we have sown spiritual seed among you, why is, it, why is it such a big deal to you if we reap material harvest from you. So the attitude from the church is that it's a big deal when, when the church has to pay uh, the leaders, the pastors. Uh, but, uh, but, but that's precisely the point. Paul said, you do have to pay. Uh, it is your responsibility. Uh, and, and, uh, and so we have the guidelines so far that uh, there should be com compensation, there should be sufficient to cover the family, should be adequate to remove the concerns over need, should be honorable, um, and, 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 and should be uh, connected to spiritual service. <clears throat> well, one, 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 one thing we, uh, you know, we must uh, also understand that there's, there, there's easy to have double standard here, and we need to watch out for the double standard that pops up uh, all the time when we come to compensation of the pastor and leaders. Uh, after all, uh, you know, we may conclude that he's working for God, so God will take care of him, or, or take care of them. Uh, we, may, we may think that, uh, you know, if we uh, take care of, 
of, of, of the pastor and do some, uh, some, something uh, just minimum, uh, it's also adequate enough. Um, so here Paul is saying that no, uh, the, the Lord's servant deserves to be supported well. There should not be a double standard applying to preacher and ministers, a standard that is considerably lower than, uh, than we uh, use for the work uh, uh, in, 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 in the marketplace. We should pay them as generously as feasible and leave the stewardship of the money to them uh, and trust God with the, with, the, with, the, with the process. But as we do so, we must also remember that the church is not an employer. Um, it is always a problem when you have a system of compensation, uh, and so we need to make it clear, uh, because uh, when we pay somebody to do something, we uh, automatically uh, assume the position of control. Uh, and, and, and that is a problem for both the church and for the spiritual leaders. The church is not an, 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 an employer. Uh, so the, the leaders serve in the church and not church employees. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and so when, when churches pay for pastors and staff, uh, they have a tendency to control uh, the use of resources and the ministry operation and the result. Uh, what, what goes is, okay, we pay you and we want you to uh, do so many hours of preaching, so many hours of visitation. Uh, every uh, month we want to have uh, how many people witness to. And, you know, so sometimes you have a, a, a list of things to be accomplished. In the, in the uh, structure of the world, who holds the purse is the boss. Uh, if you pay someone to do the work, then they're supposed to do what you want. Uh, and to get approval uh, for the result of their work. But that is not the church. Uh, in the church, uh, scripture alone is, a, uh, is the guide and measure of any work, of any result. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church and the head shepherd. Uh, so, so, the, so the church is, uh, is instructed here to, uh, to be generous, uh, to uh, to be uh, gracious and to be honorable in, in the way they support. And, uh, and uh, sometimes we ask the question, then uh, how much is, uh, is enough when we're talking about the level of support here? Uh, now, the Bible does not give specific instruction on this, but in general, uh, uh, the conversation of the church leaders should reflect the economic conditions of the members of the church. I think last time I mentioned that, uh, that uh, don't pay us too much that you will come to resent us, but don't pay us too low that you will come to despise us. Uh, so that sounds good, but you still say, well, what, what does it mean? Now, I, I, I like the suggestion that we take, up the, we take the average household income of all the members of the church leadership team of Bank of Han. And this uh, assures that if you serve in a poor area, you will be as poor as your members and not any poorer than they are. And if you serve in an affluent area, then you should be on equal footing as the members so that there's a sense of fairness and equality. So out of just curiosity, I was checking on California. Uh, uh, and if I say, you know, if we just pay our pastor the minimum wage, what would it be? You know how much it would be? I wonder if you ever think about that. Now, uh, uh, according to, uh, to the, state, the law of the state of California, uh, minimum uh, uh, salary of uh, examined, uh, uh, examined employment is 54000 uh, If you uh, put in health care insurance and all that, you're looking at a very, very big commitment. And uh, looking to the Vietnamese uh, churches, I think less than 10% actually pay the minimum wage for the pastors. That's just to tell us uh, how, much, uh, how much more we have to be thinking about these things. So, so, so Paul is uh, uh, telling the church that this is something that you have to be thinking about. Uh, and, he, and he tied it to the, the process of life and the principle of life in Galatians 6. Then I read verse 6, but I want to read the context, the connection to that, so we understand that this matter is not independent by and of itself. It connects to the whole attitude, 
the whole value system of the church and of the ministry, uh, and it, uh, it has eternal consequences. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now, if you remove the verse, verse 6, you may feel very fine with this instruction. You know, a man reaps what he sow, uh, and if you sow uh, to, be, to satisfy your sinful nature, there will be destruction. If you sow to be, be pleasing to the Holy Spirit, you will reap uh, life. And so do well, do good. Uh, and you're thinking about, you know, some, some kind of work service. Uh, the context is actually measure how you pay your pastor, measure how you handle money in the church. And it actually reflects the value system of how you understand sowing and, and reaping, uh, how you understand the, 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 the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, and how do you take opportunity to do good, especially in the context of the church. So that's, that's, that's the part of, uh, of, 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 of the law that we, uh, that we, uh, we have here. Uh, but let me just also men, uh, men, uh, take, add a note of caution. Now, obviously, we should support ministries and people in ministry that are, biblical, uh, that are biblically sound and responsible, but it does not mean that we support every man and his, mother, uh, and his brother who claims to serve the Lord. Not everything and not everybody connected to ministry deserve the support of God's people. So we have to be wise and, uh, and, uh, and uh, discerning on uh, the part of our stewardship. But once we determine uh, to, uh, that this is um, men and, uh, and, and a ministry from God, uh, uh, then, uh, then we want to be uh, honorable and uh, treat the servants of God who are worthy we should give happily, joyfully, generously, with confidence in the word and guidance of the Spirit. I want to move to point four and uh, take up a little bit of uh, expansion here uh, uh, so that uh, it will set up a, an, under, an, uh, an understanding beyond just the financial connection to, uh, in the church and dealing with the, uh, the model of ministry that, uh, that affect each and every one of us here. So when we look into uh, the, uh, uh, part 4 uh, from 11 to 14, I want to expand it out this way. So it is a pattern of faith. Uh, Paul, Paul is uh, 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 pointing out that the, the reason we should care for spiritual leaders in our midst is because it is a matter of our responsibilities. It is uh, common sense. It is God's law. And now he said it's a pattern of faith. This is how... God has worked with his people throughout the, throughout the ages. Uh, so the point here is that uh, this is not something strange or not something new to you. Uh, if others have this right uh, of support from you, shouldn't we have uh, it all the more? What was that? This is not something you don't understand. So uh, back to verse 11. If we sow spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share the right over you, uh, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use uh, this right, but we undo all things so that uh, we will be caused no hindrance to the gospel. Do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the fruit of the temple, and those who attend regularly to the, uh, the altar have their share of the altar? Also, the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel get their living from the gospel. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very obvious and very, very, very clear here. Uh, Paul said uh, that, uh, that it is the pattern that God has been using uh, uh, throughout the, uh, the, 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 the relationship he has with his people. Um, uh, so Paul already established uh, that uh, they have the rights uh, uh, in the church. So 
and the, so he, he, he pointed out that if it's not obvious uh, for others, uh, but uh, it should be very obvious uh, uh, in his connection to the church. He founded the church, he built up the church, he spent time uh, developed the church, and, and if they don't connect to him, then they really have a wrong concept of, 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 of connection. But he, he also pointed out that uh, we, uh, that uh, uh, verse 12, that uh, we did not use this right, but endure all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. That connect to uh, the, the portion that we will deal with next week or after in verse 15, but I have used none of these things. I'm not writing these things so that it will be done for my case. Uh, for it would be better for me to die than to have any man uh, make my boast an empty one. So Paul is saying that I'm not using this right. I'm, I'm talking uh, to you so that I will show you what we ought to do uh, or, the, uh, or, uh, or the better model or the way that we should uh, serve, uh, uh, to serve the gospel. Uh, so I will uh, 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 save that for the next time. Uh, in verse 13 and, and 14, I just want to make two points uh, clear and then uh, tie that to the, 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 uh, the, uh, the intention of Paul to, to show that there's a model uh, that the church uh, should consider to work on. So verse uh, 13, don't you know that those who work in temple get their food from the temple and those who serve at the altar share the, what is offered on the altar? Now this is uh, a universal pattern the pagans do the same thing uh, in the temple, uh, and and uh, just on just on the, the connection to uh, to this practice of, of compensation, uh, the the people bring sacrifice uh, to the temple, the uh, uh, the priests uh, and those who serve in the temple have a portion of that uh, for their for their support. Uh, and and uh, and uh, when the people of Israel enter into the promised land. Uh, got uh, put in uh, a system uh, so that uh, the, uh, the, the, the worship by sacrifice uh, can happen uh, uh, all through the generations of the people. And he separated out uh, a, a, a tribe of Levites who were descendants of Aaron, and they're separated out for the work of the priesthood. They served the Lord, and the Lord was uh, their inheritance. Uh, so they desire, they derive their uh, living in serving the Lord. In uh, number uh, uh, 18, uh, verse 20, the Lord said to Aaron, you will have no inheritance in, uh, in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share and your inheritance among the Israelites. So when the people of, uh, of, uh, of God uh, are given opportunity to conquer the land of Canaan, uh, the land was divided up for, for all the tribes except for the tribe of Levi. So they don't have any place to plant their crops or earn their, uh, or harvest their, you know, the uh, the grains to, to eat. Uh, they actually uh, have the inher uh, inheritance in the Lord, meaning in the service of the Lord, they will earn their living. Uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 10. Verse 8, at, this, at, the, at that time, uh, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the ark and the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to serve him and to bless his name until this day. That is why the Levites have no share or inheritance among the brothers. The Lord is their inheritance, as uh, the Lord your God told them. So, so God said, uh, if you are the Levites, you are separate out. Uh, you, you don't work uh, as normal uh, uh, as, uh, as, the, as the rest of the people of Israel. Uh, you will serve me and, uh, and your, your support will, uh, will be from your service. So because of the other tribes are given the land and the Levites are called to serve the Lord, the responsibility of taking care of the Levites is the responsibility of everyone in Israel and they are instructed to take care of the Levites. We have that in Deuteronomy 14. Uh, do not neglect the Levites uh, living in your town, for they have no allotment or inheritance on their own. So that's obvious. Uh, it's just like it should be obvious in the church. But, uh, but even to the people of Israel, it's, it's not obvious. And that time, the Levites are forced to uh, leave the temple, leave the spiritual service, go uh, do some 
uh, labor work uh, for, for, uh, the, for food. Uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18, the priests who are the Levites, indeed the whole tribe of Levi, are to have no allotment or inheritance with Israel. Uh, with Israel. They shall live on the offerings make, uh, made to the Lord by fire, for that is their inheritance. So they shall live on the offering uh, of the people to the Lord. So that is uh, in practice of the Old Testament uh, to support the Levites and the priests because they are separate out for the work of the temple of ministry. Now, when we, when we come to, uh, to uh, the instruction here, Paul makes a very clear uh, uh, directive in verse 14. So also, so that is the model, uh, and that is the, 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 the way the church should operate. So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. Uh, so, so Jesus affirmed, and the word here is very, is very strong, the word has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. So, uh, so God commanded uh, this is the way uh, he will support uh, those who serve uh, in leadership capacity in the preaching ministry, teaching ministry, leadership of the church. He commanded the church to rise up to uh, carry that responsibility and to do so with love and with honor. Uh, but then uh, we have a, a problem right there, and I want to uh, spend the next uh, few, few minutes to explain that, maybe a little bit more, more than a few minutes. Uh, but I wanted to, to show that, uh, that we are uh, looking at a, a, a setup of ministry models that affect the church. Um, <laughs> Uh, because uh, Paul's uh, behavior and Paul's uh, teaching and action right here. So if, if, if we look at uh, verse uh, 11 to 15, you will see the, uh, um, the uh, conflict, if we put it that way, of the possibility that we have to uh, explain. If we show spiritual things in you, it's just too much if we read material things from you. If others share the right over you, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use this right, but endure all things so that we will cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the food of the temple, and those who attend regularly to the altar have their share from the altar? So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. But I have used none of these things. I am not writing these things so that it will be done so in my case. For it would be better for me to die than to have any man make my boast an empty one. Now, when, when you read it, you say, there's something wrong right here. Because so first you set up the model, and then you said, I'm not going to use the model. Then you set up, you say, the Lord commanded, the church commanded those who serve the gospel. This is the way you behave. This is the way you live. This is the model you do. And then he said, but I'm not doing it. Uh, so, so we have uh, two possibilities here. Is Paul, uh, the first is that Paul is being disobedient to apply the biblical model of service in his own life. Or he is setting up a second model of service under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And, and this is very, 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 very important to understand because it affects us how we serve and how we carry out our, our, our work in the church and through the church. It has profound impact on the work of the church. So if Paul is disobedient, then we cannot do what he did. So if, if, if this is uh, strictly, uh, this is the only way to serve, then I'm doing it wrong, then I need to quit my job or I need to quit the, the job in the church because if the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel only, uh, if that's the only model as many are proposing uh, in, in our midst, then either Paul is in disobedience, and, and so am I, or, or, or how, how, do we, uh, how do we see this work out? So, so we, have, uh, we have the possibility here that uh, uh, if Paul is being disobedient, then, then we have problem, that we cannot uh, do what he did. We cannot even listen to what he said because, you know, he said, the Lord said, and then uh, he said, but I'm going to ignore him. I'm going to do something that I like, and I don't care what he said. Then we have to disregard all that he talked, uh, and then we have a huge problem with the New Testament revelation. 
Meaning if Paul is wrong here, if, if, if he's blatantly disobedient right here, then, then everything we have from Paul is in suspect, which of course is not the case. Uh, so if Paul is teaching on a new model ministry in the age of the church, and so we, 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 we see that he is establishing new things as we see in, uh, in, the, in the letter of Corinthians already, he said many times that the Lord has not touched upon this, this, this matter. He has not directly revealed uh, his, uh, uh, his direction here, but I am going to tell you what he, uh, what he is teaching. Uh, I, as his apostle, uh, speak with his authority. I'm going to lay out the new things for you. And I believe this is what he's doing, and, and so we must uh, take into consideration that. So if he's teaching on, on a new model, or a parallel model, or a second model uh, of ministry in the age of the church, then we must consider it uh, in the work of the church, and we must see how it applies to our life. And we must apply it to the people in the church, because there are doors that open, and opportunities that are given to the people that we have been uh, prevented uh, because of our lack of understanding, our lack of connection to what, uh, uh, what uh, is being set up right here. So we are looking at, uh, briefly, uh, we'll double back and, and look into this detail next week, but I would just want to make connection here that we are looking at two models of, uh, of, 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 of ministry. Number one is professional, uh, so that's, that's what it means. Uh, this is one thing you do, and, and this, is, this is it. Uh, the, the other one is bivocational. So you have uh, one model is professional, second is bivocational. And uh, so let, let me just uh, establish some point there uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the two models. So when we look into this model, we have uh, to, to ask the question, what is a professional model of ministry? Is it exclusive? Meaning, is, is that the only way to do it? Uh, is it applicable now? Is that uh, only the way to do it in the Old Testament? Or is that applying the church age? Is it exclusive now? Meaning, in the church age, is it still the only way to do it? Or is it uh, uh, one, of, uh, 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 one of the models that is set up? So same, same thing we will ask the question when we talk about Paul's model. Uh, what is the bivocational model of ministry? Uh, is this a special case for Paul? Is this something peculiar to Paul? And, and we have to limit to his own way of, uh, of applying God's word. Or we have to make room for his disobedience, or how we want to deal with that. Is it applicable to the church age? Or is it exclusive now, meaning uh, <coughs> Uh, is, 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 is this something new uh, for, the, for, for the church in the, uh, from the New Testament? So we have uh, several verses uh, here. Um, uh, first, let me just set up uh, the uh, professional uh, model. Uh, number one, we, we, we see that it is exclusive model in, uh, uh, in the Old Testament. As, as we mentioned uh, in number 1820, I already read that. Uh, the Lord said to Aaron, you will have no inheritance in the land. I am your share of inheritance, and, and, and you live uh, uh, by the offering of, of my people. Uh, so that's the, the, the support and, and the instruction to the peoples that do not neglect the Levites living uh, in your town, for they have no allotment inheritance for their own. Uh, uh, so in Joshua, uh, meaning the next generation, you have the same model. Uh, Joshua 13, but the, for the tribe of Levi, he gave no inheritance, since offering made by fire to the Lord, the God of Israel, uh, their inheritance, as he promised them. So this model continue. It continued into, in, into the history of, uh, of, of Israel, into, in, the, in the time of exile. Uh, in Ezekiel 44, uh, the, the Lord repeat the model. I am to be the only inheritance the priests have, you are to give them no possession in Israel. I will be their possession. They will eat the grain offerings, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and everything in Israel devoted to the Lord will belong to them. The best of all the first food, of all the special gift, will belong to the priest. Uh, you are to give them the first portion of your ground meal so that uh, a blessing may be rest on your household. 
So, so, so the Lord said, uh, uh, they get the income, they get the support from the offering of the people, from the support of the people. But what is important here is we ask the question now, does that model extend to the church, to the church age, uh, to where we are right now? Uh, uh, and how do we, uh, how do we um, uh, structure the church in, in terms of the work accordingly? Uh, it is extending to the church age. We see that in Matthew uh, 10, when the Lord sent out his, his, his disciples and his, uh, his workers, he said, Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belt. Take no bag for the journey or the extra tunic or sandals or staff, for the worker is worth his keep. So Jesus said, uh, uh, I'm sending out you in ministry work, but uh, you don't need to worry about your support uh, 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 there will be support from the people because the worker is worth his keep. keep. Same thing you see in Luke uh, 10. Uh, uh, when you enter a house, uh, say peace to the house. Uh, if the man of peace is there, you, your peace will rest on that. Meaning if there's agreement of support of your ministry, then you don't need to run around uh, to find the support. You just stay there. So stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the worker deserves his wages, do not move around from house to house. He said, don't go around and find support. That's not your focus. Your focus is to serve and let the people provide for you. We, we already read uh, 1 Timothy 5. The elders who direct affairs of the church are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. Scripture said, do not muzzle the uh, ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wage. Uh, so we're very clear there. And then in the passage we, we read in Galatians 6, uh, anyone who receives instruction in the Word must share the, uh, good things with his instructor. And most obviously in verse 14 on our text, so the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get the living from the gospel. I want to also to add, uh, because of the, uh, the people of God who go out into the ministry, get no support from the outsiders, obviously, uh, so where, where, where do the support come from? It has to come from the church. So 3 John uh, 6 to 8, uh, uh, John wrote, uh, They have told the church about your love. You will do well to send them, meaning the, 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 the missionaries or the preachers, on their way in a manner worthy of God. It was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought therefore to show hospitality to such men so that they, we may work together for the truth. So, so, so here, uh, they have no help from, uh, from, uh, from, from the pagans. It is the job of, uh, of the church, the responsibility of the church, to treat them well and to send them off with resources so they can serve the Lord. So, the, so, so, so we established that the professional model is in place for the church age and that uh, it continue um, uh, but, but then Paul is saying that uh, we recognize that, I just told you that, and I just established, re-established for you that it is the Lord who directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. But he is saying now that there is another new thing that, uh, that come into consideration, and that is what he said. Now, what I just praise the bivocational model of ministry. So if you give me a few minutes, I'll lay down the groundwork and then we can discuss uh, the implication next week. What's the, what's the big change? What's the big change uh, in, in terms of the model of ministry in the Old Testament and the New Testament? In the, New, in the Old Testament, the, the tribes of Levites are separate out uh, for the priesthood and for the service of the temple. But in the New Testament, there's no separation the priesthood belong to all believers. So that's a huge change. There's no more classes, uh, class distinction, uh, no more separation. Uh, all God's people are priests uh, are priest before him. And so, so the Old Testament structure does not translate into perfectly uh, into the New Testament uh, because of, of this change. First Peter 2. Uh, verse 4, and come unto him as a living stone which has been rejected by man, but, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stone, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belong to God, that you may declare the praises of him who caused you out of darkness into the wonderful light. So, so now all believers uh, belong to God and also as uh, priests before him. Uh, the, the, the result of Christ's salvation and the Christ's work on the cross uh, at the end, uh, when Revelation 5 uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the worship in heaven, we hear this. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your own blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. So all people from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, have been made priests to God uh, to, uh, to, uh, to offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and worship before him. So, the, so, so then the exclusiveness uh, of the Old Testament is no longer applicable in the church age. So now Paul is uh, uh, setting up the, the model, uh, even though the professional model continue, uh, the, the second model is, uh, is uh, therefore necessary uh, to, uh, to be uh, uh, um, uh, used by those who are in the church. So uh, in Acts uh, 18, uh, model, uh, by vocational model is easy to understand. You work when you, uh, in, in the, at the same time you serve. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jewish named Aquila, native of Pontius, who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. Because Claudius has ordered all the Jews to leave Rome, Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue and trying to push with Jews and Greeks. So Paul has a job and he has a profession. He's make tents. That's why, you know, we, we have the, the, the name tent making ministry. Uh, what it means in bivocational ministry, you, you serve in ministry, but you work for your own support. Uh, and, and here in, uh, in, 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 in the text uh, that we have, uh, chapter 9, uh, verse uh, 15, he explained what that means. It means that you preach the gospel without charge. You, you serve the gospel, you serve the church uh, without compensation. But I have not used any of these rights. I am not writing this in hope that you will do such thing for me. I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of this boast. We'll explain all this reason why he's so let's say, gung-ho about this. Um, yet, I, yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, uh, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I simply discharge a trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make use of my rights in preaching it. Uh, so, so that's the motto, uh, serve the gospel uh, free of charge. Um, uh, in uh, chapter uh, 11, he also point out that uh, this, next, this motto is helpful in protecting the gospel. Um, so, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, so, so, he, so he said in verse, uh, let me just jump down to verse 10. He was talking about, you know, I'm, I'm going to serve without charge. And he said, uh, surely the truth of Christ is in me. Nobody in this region of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows I do. But I will keep on doing what I'm doing, meaning I will keep uh, uh, serving without charge to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things that they boast about. Uh, so there are people who, uh, who, uh, who work for solid gain and, uh, and therefore, and enter the work of the gospel. And he said, this is not something that he wants to do. Now, I want to establish that this is not just uh, Paul's peculiar situation, but, but it is uh, uh, the model here. In uh, uh, chapter 4 of Corinthians, he said uh, it is the, 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 the model that involved uh, the apostles. He did not say how many, but he said... Uh, uh, for it seemed to me that God has put us apostle on display, uh, and then he uh, he he said uh, all the things that the uh, the apostle did, 
uh, we were weak, but you are strong, we are honor, uh, you are honor, we are dishonor. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty, and we are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. And then he said this, we work hard with our own hands. And that's part of the model of the apostle. So he said that we, as the apostle, we work uh, on our, with our own hands and uh, to carry out our ministry. Uh, in Acts chapter 20, uh, when he gathered the, uh, the pastors and the leaders of the church of, uh, of Ephesus, um, he said, uh, there's a model that I want you to, uh, to follow. I've been teaching you on this. I want to show you this, uh, that uh, this is what you do. Uh, so, so he said that you yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companion in everything I did. I show you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the word of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So he said, what kind of hard work? The work that we do, that, that we supply our own needs and the needs of our companions. So, so he pointed out that there, there is this model that available to them that, uh, that they can serve in that effectively. Now, very interestingly, when he talked about this model, he, he is not just applying to himself, he applied to everybody who works with him. Uh, what I call the next generation leaders. Uh, so, so, and, and sometimes the church complain about that, and we'll explain that next week, as, as why it is uh, such a, 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 a challenging model to, to apply. Uh, but, then, but then he said that, uh, that uh, when he sent people to the church, um, he, he said this, did I exploit you through any uh, of the men I send you? And any man I send you behave differently than I do? Any man, any man that I send to you uh, get paid from you? I urged Titus to go to you and I sent bro a brother with him. Titus did not exploit you, did he? Did we not act in the same spirit and follow the same course? So he said that everybody who, who he sent, everybody on his team is acting in, in the same spirit and follow the same course, meaning the same model of bivocational bi ministry. Uh, in uh, uh, Thessalonians uh, Thessalonian chapter 2, he's talking about uh, the hard work that's required. Uh, he said uh, that we love you so much that we are delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work day and night in order to not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel to you. And that is the, the, the requirement. You, you don't just work part-time here and there to do some work at the church. You carry on your responsibility to the church fully, and you work day and night, and you toil, and you, uh, and you carry the, uh, your, 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 your burden so that uh, you don't burden anyone else. But that's the that's model. Uh, and it is a model that he wanted the church to follow. So in the Second Thessalonians chapter 3, he said, uh, for, for you yourself know how you ought to follow our example. Um, uh, he said, we were not idle when we were with you. Uh, we worked day and night laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to you. We did this not because we not having the right for such help, but in order to make ourselves a model for you to follow. So, so, so by and large, this is the model for the church. So, so here we are, we are confronted, uh, we are presented with the model of ministry uh, that uh, affect many of us. Um, we will talk more about that, but uh, you know, for, for many of us who, who, who think that if you serve the, the, in the leadership of the church, if you have a gifted in ministry, that uh, your, your, uh, <clears throat> your calling uh, is, uh, is uh, bivocational, uh, but uh, if the model is, is, is not open, uh, then, uh, then, you, uh, then you are limited, you cannot serve. Uh, th there are people who sit on, uh, you know, a lot of uh, opportunity on their hands and, and do not serve in the fuller capacity because they don't see that there's a open, uh, it's a model of ministry that is biblical, that is supported, that is uh, clear, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, there's an uh, there's example for us to, to, to walk that way. So we'll talk more about that, and we'll see now when we have that model open up, and then Paul said, uh, I don't use any of my rights. Uh, I, I serve this way. 
So it's not just a motto, but, but it's, it's a life pursuit that, uh, that makes the carry out of, of the gospel mandate, giving yourself for the work of the gospel, uh, loving the church, sacrifice for the church, uh, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as the way you follow Christ uh, can be carried out by, by God's people. <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff there and a lot of things to chew on. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you talk about that, you will see possibility and challenges. And, and I want to present that uh, to the church so, so that the, the men among us uh, not just thinking, you know, what do I do with my life? Um, uh, uh, what's my calling? What's the possibility uh, here? Uh, at least uh, God is uh, saying that, uh, that uh, there are models that, uh, uh, that we can follow. Um, if it's professional, um, uh, more power to, uh, uh, to, to us to carry out that calling. If bivocational, more power as we embrace uh, the, the life here with the attitude that we have rights and responsibility we live for the responsibility and forego our right. Lord, help us to be more like Paul because he followed you and become more like you. So help us to serve you and understanding our responsibilities to others and the rights that we have that we are called to, to forego our rights so that the gospel can be proclaimed that the work of, uh, of, uh, of the church can be uh, received without hindrance and that uh, your name may be praised and that uh, your people uh, will be uh, helped and those who belong to you will be gathered into your kingdom. Help us to be a part of that. Help us to structure our life accordingly to, according to the scripture so that we can be serving you in the maximum way for your glory. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.